Hello, I'm Elizabeth Warburton and welcome to Season 3 of Property Elevator. In Season 2, we saw many property professionals face the angels to try and secure that all-important funding for their property projects. And this year, we're back for more. Now, we've seen over the last year just how important it is to have your money working for you. With inflation rising and bank interest levels at their lowest in years, it's never been more important to put your money to good use. This is why so many people turn to property investing. It's not easy though, you often need both the finance and the knowledge to take that deal over the line. And that's where our angels fly down to help you. In this show, we give property professionals the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property investors. Helen Chorley, John Howard, Paul Mahoney, Ranjan Bhattacharya, and Nicholas Woolwork, or who we call our property investment angels. These developers have the chance to walk away with the backing of someone who can bring both the finance and experience to their deal. You're watching Property Elevator. Hi, I'm John Howard. I've been a property developer and investor for 40 years and during that time I've bought and sold in the region of 4,000 properties. My name is Paul Mahoney. I'm a property investor. I also founded Nova Financial Group, which is a property investment advisory company. My name's Helen Chorley. I'm a professional property investor. I'm also a co-founder of the Property Sisters UK community, supporting women and SME developers in the industry. My name is Nicholas Woolwork. I'm an investor, developer and owner of PropertyForum.com and the development brand Redbrick. My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I'm a property entrepreneur, an investor and developer for the last 30 years. I, I, love, I do love it, I do love it. I think it's brilliant, I think it's a brilliant little site. And I guess what you're talking about with your consultant is going in under permitted development instead of planning to get those nine. H how are you going to keep an eye on costs, basically? How are you going to keep them honest? Do you know that what cash you're actually looking for from us? It's entirely up to you. You've got about a minute in which to decide what you'd like to do. Welcome to episode six. Let's see who our first pitch of the day is. Um, I'm pitching a plot of land in Dublin, right. uh, looking for 400 houses to build two houses and sell the two houses off. Okay, amazing. And is there anybody in particular that you'd like this investment no, to go no, to? No, no, any one of them. I know they're hugely experienced, so yeah, they that's, are. Where, that's yeah. where I'm after more, I suppose. Yeah. They always love a land deal as well, so yeah. hopefully you've got a good one there. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your expected uh, GDV of the, uh, the project? 700,000. Lovely. Okay, so nice healthy profit in yeah, there. Yeah, a nice one, yeah. Brilliant. Well, good luck. I'll have a little chat to you when you get out. Yeah, happy days. Thank you so much for, I believe, flying over from Dublin. So I got lost on the, on, on the, on the ground and everything. It was just crazy. Oh, don't, don't worry about that. Um, uh, please tell us a bit about yourself and a bit about the deal you've brought to us today. Yeah, I'm Chris. Uh, I come from uh, West Dublin. I'm a healthcare worker and um, I'm looking to get involved in property because, you know, I have a six-year-old son with autism and I'm basically trying to build up a company that I can hand over to him when he's older, you know. Um, and tell us about the, the deal you brought to us today. Um, this is a site not far from where I live in Ballyferma. Um, it's had previously had planned permission, but that's since lapsed. Mm -hmm. um, and so we should have no problem getting uh, planned permission again. Yeah, so I've had a builder look at the site. We priced it up for two houses. It'll, um, I have the figures here. It'll cost about 404,000. A lot of houses in this area have been, were built in the 1950s and they're selling for 300,000 at the minute. So um, an estate agent I was talking with, he said I could reasonably expect 350,000 for a brand new three bed house here yeah. in this area. And is this your first deal? This is my first deal, yeah. yeah, yeah. Excellent. So it's two houses you're putting yeah, on the side? Two yeah. houses. Two houses, yeah. yeah. It's a site for two houses. Yeah. Two there's, there's, a, there's a site directly across the road from this um, where it was the exact same. They've built two houses in the garden. And have they sold those houses? Them houses are sold. Houses, houses in this area don't last for very long. Do you know what they sold for? I don't know what they sold for. Yeah, now this, them houses have been sold a long time. But, but your, your agent thinks 350. He says 350, which would yep. be reasonable enough to expect yep. for such a okay. yeah. I like Dublin. My dad's from Dublin. Yeah. I'm Irish. It's a good it's an Irish that's passport. a good start. Lovely. An Australian who's Irish. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an Irish, an good Irishman with a strange accent, yeah. Depending yep. on how you look at it. Um, you said, so you've said on the front there, um, cash injection, 
for a deposit for bridging finance? Yeah, so basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking to use bridging finance, obviously, to buy, build and sell. But my, where I'm struggling is I don't, I don't have the money for the deposit, so that's where I was hoping I want to use. And, and so you've, look, you've looked into finance. Um, uh, do, are you able to get the finance yourself or do you need somebody with experience oh, to I come in? I definitely need someone with experience, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And what's the, what's the terms of the finance, or, yeah, rough? I just, there were just quick phone calls I had with okay. some of the lads that were so there. about a 30% deposit, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the 400 thou odd thousand costs, do you know what cash you're actually looking for from us? 127,000. 127, okay. And what's the purchase price of the land? 80,000. Okay. On nearest offer, so there's room for a bargain there, you know? Do you think they'd offer, um, take a subject to planning offer to get the planning back in? I could certainly find out. Yeah, has it been on the market long? It's, yeah. on, the w it's on the market a while now, yeah. Uh, how long, roughly? You know, six months. Really, so I, th I think they'd be pretty keen for any offer, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, <laughs> I'd imagine so, yeah. Okay. But if that's the right price, why hasn't it been snapped up? I'm not sure. I seems know, too, it seems too good to be true. If, if something hangs around like that, either there's a problem. Uh, is there like anything in the, the area? Planning or, or, or the price is wrong? Oh, it's over. Yeah, yeah I, was no, I, I was lost. Okay. Is there any problems like you, we can see a fence? No, that's just the uh, park there. There's a kid's playground in there and there's an old graveyard. In that park. An old graveyard, okay. Yeah. Wh how far is the graveyard from the side? Oh, it's the other side of the park. Okay, the so you can't see it from the dead these centre. No. Okay, Nicholas. fine. Yeah, it, it is Boom. a graveyard plot. Oh, that's, yeah. one <laughs> that's one of Ranjan's jokes, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm blaming him for that one. It's rubbing off, John. You're sitting Your next daughter to me. won't be very impressed, well, yeah. will she, with that? <laughs> Don't give up What's the details, the size of the plot? I'd say. Completely drawing a blank, sorry. Um, Don't worry, it's big enough for two semi touch houses. It definitely mm. is, yeah. yeah. Um, the one thing that would concern me slightly is, is the ground conditions, whether that's a problem and that's why it hasn't, mm. it hasn't, be. it hasn't yeah. been uh, snapped up. Because I would have thought Dublin, I've got a, um, I go to the south of Ireland. Uh, quite a lot um, over the have done over the years. I know it relatively well, and of course the market in Southern Ireland is pretty hot at the moment, isn't it? It's, it's, it's all come back and demand, yeah. it, it's uh, so I'd be a little bit concerned about that. But but on the face of it, we can only go on on the face of it and what you've told us. And on the face of it, you know, I think it looks an interesting deal. Do you have any sort of? I'm not familiar with the Irish market, um, so some of the nuances there, I'd need to make sure we get the best advice. But is there any sort of? In the UK, we have Section 106 payments. We have payments to the council for granting various planning applications. Yeah, Is yeah, there yeah, anything? You obviously have to pay for pa uh, planning permission. There, it's exempt from um, property tax for the first year only. So, yeah, if you are buying a building, selling, you don't have to worry about it. No, and it's exempt from um, stamp duty as well because it's a new build. Planning permission is five thousand. Is that just for the planning fees to get it submitted, sort of thing? Yeah, that's that's to the council. Just yeah, the fee. Yeah, yeah so it's, that's all it is. I that's mean, good. I, th I have to say, I think I think what you've done figure wise. It, you know, and, and, and your appraisal has been very good. So, um, excellent. That's that's. Uh, With the construction cost, where did that where did that figure come I, from? I, I was at the site with a builder. Okay. And so you, one builder's quote for that. And that's that one builder's quote. Yeah. And, that's okay. and that does sound about right, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, it does. You know, doesn't yeah. Three bed house. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't two two sound wrong. Ranjan, have you ever been to Ireland? Is it on the tube? <laughs> not on the tube, and it is outside. <laughs> it's it just is, north of Watford Gap. It is, uh, it is outside the M25. That so sounds like a up. Love Island uh, contestant <laughs> uh, comment, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> is, <that laughs> is it on the tube? <laughs> it is outside the M25. Yes, no, I'm aware. I mean, I, listen, I, I, I think uh, it's an interesting project. It's, it's, it's not for me. I'm not, no, not familiar with Ireland at all. The other thing I would always be concerned about with um, you know, because obviously, if your footprint's UK, your everything is in pounds, and you've got a currency risk dimension always. When Honestly, uh, Ranjan, it's I eighty grand. I can't believe you're saying that. The other thing, no, is I'm, I'm just pointing it out. <laughs> but, but <laughs> the bit that should really, you should point out, and I should point out yeah, to you to on. remind you, and that is corporation tax is thirteen percent in Ireland, oh, the lowest in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, you know, if you have a, 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 a company based in Southern Ireland and you're doing deals in Southern Ireland, that's why. You know, all the big, all the, you know, IBM and Google are in Dublin is because of the tax situation. You're absolutely correct. Never mind building this house. Have you considered um, An a building a corporate <laughs> HQ there? I mean, um, <laughs> <laughs> we did the planning, there may be something be in there. Long, so. long tube ride. Not Chris, for you, Ranger. Not for in me. In the I'm weaknesses, afraid. you've said every 10th house goes to the council. Can you just explain that? Yeah, so uh, because of the housing crisis in Ireland at the moment, um, there's builders who are building massive housing estates. So now they have to give up. Every tenth house. Yeah, to social housing. To the, right. Yeah, social okay. housing. Yeah. 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 So that is yeah. the section 106 That's effectively. Yeah, yeah but that doesn't affect two houses. No. Duplex. No. Yeah. 
And in terms of the planning, I, I don't know how it works in Ireland. What are the time frames on that? The, yeah, I think it's. I'm not I think sure it's similar, it. Krista. It's yeah. similar. It, it, it's very similar. It's nice, yeah. pretty yeah. similar to here. Uh, and they've relaxed the planning. Uh, the planning laws over there somewhat. Yeah, because they've, of the housing they've relaxed them because they're such shorter housing, haven't they? So, uh, and they've had a lot of a lot of people move to Ireland, and uh, it's a big housing is a big problem, like it is in the UK. To be fair, in Ireland, it's very similar, I think, Chris. Yeah, isn't it? Who, who's selling the site? Is it the neighbouring property you can see on the right? This 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 house here, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's their extended garden, essentially. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, there's a lot of sites like this in Dublin. Yeah. Okay, so you'd, there's a, you'd leave a couple of metres and go all the way back to that tree in the background? Just trying to get yeah, it goes just beyond that tree. Beyond the tree the, okay, is in yeah. that property, yeah. Do, do you plan to project manage it yourself? I can, yeah, yeah. But this is your first project? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the builder would pretty much, if they're the a builder, main, kind of they're main contractor. Start to finish, ready for sale. Like. Who would like to start first offer-wise or non-offer-wise? Ranjan's not... It, he doesn't really know where it is in the country. In, in, <laughs> he knows it. He now knows it's in Europe somewhere. So that's that. that's good. Yeah, um, it's gone. He knows where Barbados is and places like that. I know that. Who would like to start? Paul, would you like to start? I mean, you, yeah, you have got like Irish it. Irish roots. I've never all. done anything in Ireland, but I'd like to. Um, I like the fact you've come over here to present. Yeah, to us. I you love know, that. You've jumped on yeah. a plane. <laughs> love that. Shows a bit of commitment, doesn't it? Yep. Um, I think that's brilliant, and I'll offer you what you want. I'll give you the 127 grand. We'll explore the finance together. Um, I might even be able to arrange the finance. I'm not sure. I've never done it in Ireland, but potentially could arrange it. <coughs> um, and we'll split the profit. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thanks very much. This would be my cup of tea. I'm doing something very similar, a little infill plot over in East London at the moment. So make an offer then. Oh, well. Um, but I would only be interested it on it in it on a subject to planning basis. I think so that's what I think. I yeah, think yeah, that's cool. yeah, ahead with that. that no, I think that's that's taken oh, a standard, isn't it, Chris? Yeah. You yeah. want to buy it some, yeah. or, or, li or at least have a very yeah. You need it some. You need yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't put any money on for planning, yeah. Yeah. The eighty thousand again, I because I don't know the market. I don't know if that's appropriately priced. What kind of conversations you've, have you had around I, that? I was price? talking to uh, an estate agent, and sites like this would go for between eighty and ninety thousand. Yeah, right. But that's an estate agent saying that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And if you've got anything else to compare it to, an estate ag a estate agent's going to talk their own book. I know, but I, I have seen sites like this selling okay. far, far that you know. I think as long as you can sounding, narrow down the bill she's cost. Helen's sounding like a banker, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you narrow down the bill cost before exchange, you can check the comparables of what it will sell for. It doesn't matter what you're buying it for, as long as it makes the profit level we're saying thereabouts. Yeah, as I said, like, uh, the, these sites come up fairly regular, and they do sell for for that price. Mm -hmm. And would you are you committed to building this out, or would you consider kind of flipping it on without once you've got the permission, rather than building it out? I was thinking of obviously building it out and selling it off, get the money in for a future deal. Then, and what time frame have you allowed for the build? Um, it'll probably take about four months. I think that's a bit ambitious, that's, Chris. That's probably. very ambitious. I would allow, I would allow... Nine? Yeah, six to nine. I, I On a small, de even a small deal like this, I would always allow 18 months really? to build it, to get to, to you're not going to start building it as soon as you buy it. You're probably going to take six, eight weeks to get on site and get organised. Six months probably to, to build the two houses. That's nine months nearly. And then I always allow the same time again to sell. I mean, might the well, they might well sell within three months, and you know, which is great, it's a bonus, but I always allow 18 months on a small scale. And a bigger job, I always allow two years. Yeah, I presume you're comfortable with us putting in any money that's required to get the deal done after senior debt lending. So you, you've said 127,000, but if we can fund some of that with the senior debt, you, you just want to get the deal done, don't you? Yeah, basically. So it doesn't have to be that much. If you get more senior debt lending, which I think you can, mm -hmm. I think you should probably only need 30, 40% of the 80 grand, maybe? I think you need more than that. You think? What do you reckon, John? I, I, I would say if you, pay, if, you pay cash for the, if you pay cash for the purchase of the site... Yeah, and then fund the development. Then the easiest, development would be yeah. funded by a bank. Yeah. Good point, That's yeah. That's how I would look yeah. at it. But yeah, so 80 grand I would be... I haven't made my offer yet. I actually think you've had a very good offer from Paul, and I think he's got a connection in Dublin. For me, it's a little bit small. I love Ireland and love Ireland. 
Doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> <laughs> we know you do, John. That's why you sneak off early I to don't watch the watch repeat. It. I don't actually watch. I'd watch the Australian Love Island if Paul was in it. But um, I don't. Ooh, uh. I don't. If Paul was in the Australian version of Love, Love, Love Island, I'd watch it to support him. But it's um, a bit of a weird thing to say, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so basically, well, you'd we'll, like we'll, to. We all stick together. Hopefully, so you say you'd like to watch Paul in his speedos. Yeah, no, I didn't say that. I didn't that say because that. Because they all wear speedos. I, hoping you win the show. That's what I mean. I said I, I like Ireland and I'm keen to do some deals there if I can. And and I've been looking in Ireland for many years to <laughs> try and do something, and it's. I found it very difficult to find deals, to be honest with you, even though a friend of mine lives in Utrard, um, near Galway. Um, so for me, it's a bit small, and I think you've got a very good offer from Paul, and you may well get others. So I, I will step back from this one. Thanks. But well done. Thanks. Do you know what the land would be worth with the planning? I'd imagine it would go up a bit more. I'm not sure what it would be worth the planning. OK. Good. To be honest, I don't want to manage a first-time developer in all honesty, <coughs> particularly given that I'm not UK based, although I am based in Euros, so I wouldn't have the FX exposure. So that's And also that's you've that. got the tax benefit. Mm -hmm. But I'd be looking to, like that's why I'm asking about flipping it once you get the planning permission then. Um, who, uh, have you had planning advice on it? Have you got any uh, No, I was, just, I was just talking to the estate agent about the planning. Okay. I will be keen to watch how this develops. I'm not going to make an offer on this occasion, um, but you've got a great offer on the table yeah. from Paul. And uh, you might get one from Nicholas yet. Oh, he's looking a bit. Oh. He's looking a bit lively. Oh. No, he was yeah. still yeah. in. Oh, I he's looking he a bit lively. Oh, okay. You're in a win-win situation now, oh. uh, Chris, as you know. So, I, I love. I do love it. I do love it. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a brilliant little site. It seems too good to be true. Too easy. That maybe from our perspective, maybe doesn't look like that from your side, but yeah. you found it, you believe in the site. Exactly. I think that's brilliant. I'm going to step back from this one purely because I think Paul would be your perfect partner. Yeah, I think he would as well. He's got the Irish connections. I don't have that expertise, so I don't feel I could add any value to this. I could give you some tips, but my contacts probably wouldn't go to Ireland either. So I wouldn't want to burden you with a deal with me when there's a better angel on the team. So I won't be yeah. investing, but good luck. Thanks, anyway. You've got an offer. Would you like to accept it from Absolutely, Paul? Absolutely, yeah. Congratulations. Really well done, yes. Paul. Thanks very much, Paul. Well done. Yeah. Super. So, Chris, did we get our first Irish deal? We, we did. Amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So tell me what happened when you went into the room. Uh, they were fairly impressed with me, with me pitch. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, for whatever reasons, the judges just didn't want to go with it, but Paul uh, agreed, so. Paul did? Yeah. So you took it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Amazing. What was the deal? Uh, What's it split? 50-50 split. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Great, great. So what are the next steps for you now? Uh, he's going to contact me in the next few days. Uh-huh. Yeah. Probably head over, see the site? Probably, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll go and ring the vendor about the site. Brilliant. Well, congratulations. I hope you're really, really happy. Brilliant, I am, And yeah. um, yeah. thanks for coming to join us no today. Problem. You displayed all those um, uh, local connections and all of that. But you did it in an Australian accent. I was expecting you to kind of <laughs> switch. <laughs> you actually offer. had an Irish accent until I was five because my, my parents were Irish, so I had an Irish accent until I went to school. I, I was He's doing everything game. I could Decent. to get Helen to offer on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Do you I, know what? I, if in terms of like a just a flipping it on yeah. deal, I'm really yeah. interested. You, you, you don't want to be involved but I don't in all be, that. Yeah. No, it's too much work. It's too much hassle when you're sat in, in it. Sat in your and island And you can retreat. see that he wants to get his foot on the ladder yeah, in terms of get, building his first project out. So if his yeah. heart's set on that, yeah. I don't want to break his heart. So. John, welcome to Property Elevator. Thank you for having me. Uh, where have you travelled from today? Perfectly in Essex. Okay, so not too far. No, no. Is your site um, located there as well? It is. Uh, it's located in Brentwood, Essex, mm -hmm. 200 metres from the main train station. Okay, so really convenient, really yeah. good transport links. Definitely. Tell us a little bit about the site then. So it's comprising of three buildings, uh, two ground floor retail units mm -hmm. with uppers, and the mm -hmm. third building, which is an office block with three floors, uh, which has the potential to be converted for residential use. Wow, so quite a big big site. Yes, yeah, a lot of development potential. Yeah. Is that something you've got experience in or is it quite a new um, project for you? No, it's really new for me. In right. fact, um, this would be my first potential development. Yeah. I, I am a landlord yeah. and have been for six years. Okay. Uh, but this is my first opportunity to take my 
portfolio to the next level. Amazing. And then hopefully with some mentorship behind you Definitely. as well as back in. I wouldn't be able to do it without some guidance from the angels. Yeah. So how much are you looking for then as an investment? An estimated figure of 4.5 million. So a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck. Uh, I'll chat to you when you get out. My fingers are crossed for you. Brilliant. Thanks so much. <laughs>sales values that contribute to four different potential GDVs, wh wh what's the reality? You know, what, what, I, I, I understand for the reason for the range, but is it realistic? Is it expected? It, you know, what, what's, what's the, what would you actually sell these for? I would value these properties no lower than what I've set as the realistic figures. We don't know what the forecast of the future can be, so it's best to be transparent about those potential dips. But the potential of this project, I would set my expectations to be between um, 4.7 and 6.1 million GDV. Okay. And, and you said that your background is mostly sort of uh, as a landlord. Have you done anything like this before? Uh, so this is the first project which I hope to take on and uh, grow my portfolio. And um, just with your costs, wh where, where have you got the cost from? My pack says two independent builders, but I'm actually happy to say that at 10.30 this morning, I got a third uh, come back to me. These are all informal quotes. They weren't able to attend on site with me, unfortunately. First builder was able to give an indicative quote of 60,000 per unit, which was applying to the residential conversion. Uh, the consultant, which I'm working with, verified this cost as well. Uh, these are all done to a high standard, of course. The third builders who came back to me today put a range for the entire site to be done between 80 and 1.2 million as well. The builders which have come back to me have all verified a range of which I was uh, which I calculated uh, to be the correct cost for uh, building. The nine flats, do you know what configuration, what mix? The proposal from the original application was for six two beds and one, uh, sorry, three one beds. However, my consultant has advised that the layouts were improportionate and they could have been scaled a lot better. So he's been able to draw a provisional uh, floor plan which actually gives us nine two-bedroom apartments. And I guess what you're talking about with your consultant is going in under permitted development instead of planning to get those nine? Correct. Okay, that's fine. Why only nine is on that size of site? Uh, nine would be under the Section 106 payments for full planning. Given there was a full planning before, it feels like that needs to be another full planning app for a reason that perhaps you don't know yet. Is it, is it in an Article 4 direction area or anything like that? There's no Article 4 in this particular area. So it's definitely got PD rights? Yes, and the consultant has okay. verified that under PD this could be possible. Do you know how many square foot that office uh, building 5, is? 5,600, give or take. It's uh, 525 then. metres squared. And how did you actually source the site? Quite simply, I went on to Rightmove and looked for commercial properties within an hour of where I live and tried to look for properties that had the scope, development potential and uh, I quite like the idea of that the uh, retail and uppers was available. Congratulations on the pack. I thought it's very good and very professional, mm. so well done. Thank you. I'm slightly annoyed that I haven't picked this deal up myself and you've managed to do it. So that's a slight embarrassment on my side because this is just the sort of thing, just the sort of deal we buy. 
-hmm. which is could be good news for you today if the figures um, stack up. And Helen is the expert on the figures. Mm -hmm. I've been preparing for Helen. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> You've done the right thing. Well, you have As words like return on cost and return on GDP in your packs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you have yes. Prepared yeah. for Helen. I may have done some research uh, on the show before coming on. Very good. Very, very, very sensible. <laughs> I like you even more. Get surprised round that for not that. many yeah. people do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You would be surprised. Now, you've said kind of uh, 800 to 1.2 ish on the total build cost, and that's been verified by three builders. If I could um, uh, interrupt, sorry, sure. the, the 800 1.2 came from the builder this morning, and so that's one independent quote. Yeah. However, based on the consultant and another builder, we're really putting those costs at more one point, uh, sorry, at f so 960,000 for the units to be built. Yeah. And then factoring contingencies, professional services, utilities, stamp duty, seal charges, etc. on top of that. Okay. So the numbers which are in the pack, I would uh, put to you as uh, the, the correct numbers to use. Yeah, and, and your contingency, I've never seen a contingency as high as 20%. Normally it's too low, mm. but, but you've got it in as 20% and that's more or less the same as the total build cost that, that you've got. So that sounds like a big contingency to me, which I don't think I've ever said <laughs> to any developer <laughs> ever before in my life. So um, kind of talk me through that one. I wanted to bring to you a project where I could under promise and over deliver. So you'll notice other pieces of information whereby uh, perhaps I've included full rate of stamp duty. My consultant has advised me that the stamp duty I have in the pack is based on a indicative purchase price of 2.3, but he said that you wouldn't pay that full amount of stamp duty because of the mixed use uh, element of the site. As well as the seal charge, I've done a, a two thirds of the square footage from the office building because we're not going to be adding square footage, we're going to be using existing elevation under permitted development rights. I have actually withheld from putting forward an offer before coming to you guys because I felt as if, if I could pitch to you the project so you understood what potentially you'd be getting involved with, you could best advise on negotiations. So you've got 20% for contingencies, which is far too much, so that means a 10% is plenty. But the figure for contingencies is 888,000, but the bill costs only 920,000. Yeah, that's a mis So there is 920 based on per unit, and then adding on all of those uh, additional costs, so the professional services, so et cetera, and then it's 20% on top of those total costs. Okay, I think Add you've been a little bit overzealous on that one. For me, yeah. because it should be 10% on the bill costs. I <laughs> wanted to uh, put forward to you a project no, which showed a sufficient yeah. margin I with the opportunity to scale. I understand that. I understand that, John. But you could have, you could have sort of got this deal, what I call deal fit. You could have just sharpened up a little bit on a number of these figures and so on. I personally don't. I know Helen does, but I don't like three different prices and all this business. I want to know what you can sell the damn things for yep. in a in a market. I want them sold within. I ask any agent to, that, that when they go on the market, they need to be sold within 28 days. And then you get a, a serious price from the agent, a valuation from the agent, what they can sell them for. The GDV on the whole scheme is what? Realistic, we've got a 5.7. Uh, however, I'm expecting it to be 6.1. Christ, there's a hell of a difference. Yes, again, it's about setting a expectation whereby I can give you a project which will produce money based on a re realistic GDV, but knowing that there is a potential to go further and Give me, my profit. I don't need all that. What I need is a figure from you now, please, of what you think you're going to, what the GDV is going to be, bearing in mind 28 days to sell a flat when it goes on the market. So what do you think that, that figure will be? 6.1. 6.1. And on that basis, what's the net profit after all costs? Gross profit set to just under 1.5 million. You'll have to forgive me for not knowing the uh, net profit on that. Have you given any consideration to the VAT treatment? Because um, I can see in here, one of the tenants in the offices were paying a rent of 36K plus VAT, which means the building is elected for VAT. So you'd either have to um, bring it out of VAT uh, at the time of purchase, which may be difficult if it's elected for VAT as a whole yeah. unit, including the shops at the front. Yeah, VAT on top. Good so point. in other words, there's an issue of um, basically adding VAT to the purchase price potentially, although you will be able to claim it back several months later, but that's a little bit of a cash flow hit that has to be taken into account. Um, it is not something that I've uh, no. taken into consideration. That's understandable, John. It's understandable. Ranjan, you make a really, really good point there. I try to now and then. <laughs> you do. Uh, 
You do, well, regularly. <laughs> <laughs> Just and for folks really out there important. watching, I mean, you can get VAT bridging. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, another cost that needs just and needs it's to be and it's in. expensive. Yeah, it is. And wouldn't it, on this one, wouldn't it be worth just buying the office side in another SPV, de-electing that for VAT on purchase, and then just paying the VAT because it's owed on the on the commercial? Yeah, but you still need to get permission off the vendor, and if the vendor sure. can't sign the the document, whatever it is that allows you to do so on a deal like this. You know, it's a, it's a lot of money to find extra. Seen the worst. And it, it's either cash or you're borrowing it at 20% or something crazy for three months. So either way, it's, it's not clever. In fairness to John, though, he's got it in there as a 20% contingency. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's not the right contingency, is it? Because that's a long-term contingency. This is three months. So it's not... Listen, John, if we, if we work together, I can get around that for you. Mm, I mean, the good news for you is that you, your contingency, we've been talking percentages, but the, the actual figure is almost the same as the, the build cost. So you've done a presumably 20% contingency on what, the GDV or the total GDC, the, the total costs? What's that um, percentage of? The 20% the has been based on cost. The good news is that that's far too high. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes the deal even better. Like I said, <laughs> I've never seen that yeah, no. ever before, no. which is a good thing. That so comes from experience in the smaller units that I work with. Maybe I've applied that to this and not took into consideration. I think the difference is on something like this, John, you'll be working with a, a decent sized builder. I always think you should work with a builder who's got four times the turnover a year that you're asking them work to do, if you get my meaning. So if this is a million quid to do, you're looking for a builder who's got a four million turnover. In my view, that way, you know they're big enough to cope with it. If there's a problem and they get the price wrong, they've still got enough cash flow and money to, to, to suffer it if they get it wrong, if they get the fixed price wrong. And really you need to, you know, the first thing is do a schedule of works. The office is great, I get that. It's the plan for the existing retail bit. Now you mentioned um, that you've had some advice about extending it and converting that extended part into residential. You can't do that under PD. The PD is for commercial to residential conversion, meaning converting existing space to residential, not creating new space okay. and converting it to residential. So what you will be able to do with the retail and uppers is confined to that existing building envelope. Okay. You can extend it and make it and make bigger shops under PD, but you can't subsequently convert them to residential. When you say extending, uh, are you referring to only the retail space coming back? Planning to extend the building envelope in that building and then convert some of that to residential. Uh, the first and second floor will be residential, yes. The first and second floor is already residential. So and you'll be the increasing house. the footprint there to accommodate for additional two flats per level. Ah. So if you're increasing the footprint, then that's a full planning application as opposed yeah, to PD. Which we're prepared to do. Okay. 920,000 to convert 5,600 square foot of office is probably about right for that. But if you're talking about building a, an extension with two flats, extra storeys, and refurbishing the existing flats, I think that is you know, quite substantially light by three or 400,000 pounds, I would say. What I like about a deal like this is that there's two, part, two elements to it. Yes. So I'd pick up the phone to a friend of mine, if it were mine, and I'd sell the four flats and the, and the shops. I'd bang them off the same day as I pay for the whole thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't bother with it. And I would concentrate on, on the rest of it. Now, there's lots of ways of, 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 of um, doing a deal like this. There's lots of options, depending on when you want to keep it or you don't want to keep it. And, and that is your, your preference. But for me, I would be very interested in doing the deal if you're prepared to sell the four flats and the two shops quickly leaving us with the nine flats to convert is that something you would consider if the figures are right whilst speaking to the sellers they're actually currently trying to sell the retail and the uppers to an existing tenant great but due to um, them being slow off shall we say to get yeah. to completion it's led to them bringing the entire site back to market because okay. they'd rather sell the lot. But um, to um, answer um, your question, you yeah. pot potentially have a seller to go to straight away. What's the split in price between the, the, uh, the office building and the shops and the flats? It, the conversation has only been around the entire lot. And again, I haven't put forward a purchase price proposal. Okay. Uh, so, so, uh, okay. so as I see this deal is that it needs, it needs tidying up, okay? Looks to me like there's about 1.4 million profit in it, give it or take. So uh, I would like to make you an offer. 
and my offer is to fund the whole project and to share the profit with you, give you 35% of the profit. So we'll pay all the, all the costs, we'll prove, we'll get the deal done, we'll prove, prove cash funds and all the rest of it to the vendor so they know they're dealing with someone who knows what they're doing. That would be my offer now. See what the others want to do. Thank you, John. Have you considered any other layouts for the office? The, the, the I have considered other layouts, but I didn't want to give you a pack three times as large. And John, the facts are the square footage is the square footage. It's not growing, Nicholas. It's the same footage. Whatever you do with it, it's the same footage. Have you had any um, consultants' views on the car parking? Within Brentwood Council's housing strategy, I believe it's quoted as saying that there is expected one parking space per single bed and two for every two. But because of the close proximity to the train station, uh, there is some forgiveness in that. Possibly is maximised already, I think. Yeah. The, the consultant I've been working on has suggested on various ways of which we can improve the existing layout. Um, you may not be able to see it in the images, but behind those first row of cars, there's a s very small brick wall. And the cars which are parked behind that come in from the far left, and it's a very slightly raised area. Um, again, maybe somebody professional could come in and structure that a bit better to accommodate those flats from the office. I don't, I don't think I'd be able to offer any more than what John has already offered. And I think it's probably more up your alley, to be honest. Uh, well, it's, so it's quite local to me. Yeah, I, I think... You I, live you in know, Australia, <coughs> so it's a bit of a problem. Uh, you know, to be, to be perfectly honest, I think you'd probably be a better partner f f for John on this. So, uh, I, I, you know, I'll leave, I'll leave it as it is. Thank you. Like the pack is, you know, th there's so much detail in there, kind of almost too much detail for John, not for me, <laughs> but, <laughs> but a lot of detail. So that is super. I guess my concern is what you've done before like this. And I don't think you've done much like this. This would be your first kind of major project. That's correct. Uh, I will be transparent and say that this project is much larger than my current residential portfolio. Don't worry, we're going to do it together, John. Well, I've got no fear in the project. In fact, I'm very confident that it'll be a success. And how would you go about kind of identifying a builder to work with? Because again, all these things are great in theory, but that's where you can, you can lose a lot of margin, shall we call it? The boat builders which come back to me today uh, are one option. If I was going to use the consultant's advice and the other builder, I would want to them to come on site, do a full evaluation and potentially bring in a fourth. And if you guys uh, come into the table, then I would lean to you to uh, offer your services and uh, professional guidance. H how are you going to keep an eye on costs, basically? How are you going to keep them honest? It is not something that I've took fault on. I mean, with the amount of work that I've put into it already, I wouldn't want to let anything uh, fall apart. So all I would say is, is that within those costs, I'll be looking to bring a product manager on board as well as other consultants to make sure that the project stayed within budget and on time. And you'd be working on this full time? Well, ideally, I'd like to look for more projects and other developments um, so that I can bring you guys more deals. Nicholas, are, we gonna, are you going to get off the pot? Or I don't what? know if yes. Helen's made a decision or not yet. She's still thinking. Mm. It's a woman's prerogative. I'm indecisive because I do like it. I mean, it's, it's the perfect bricks and mortar building. Mm. The, the, the concern I have for, for me is the parking because I'd like to add more value than potentially they already have. Mm -hmm. But I think parking is going to restrain anything more there. And I, and I feel that your bill costs are going to go up quite a lot. Yeah, We've, there are some creative ways to enhance the space, but it won't come cheaply. I think because it's in Brentwood, it's a little bit far for me. You get a nosebleed. Yeah, I think for those reasons, it's, it's a bit marginal for what I'd like to do on, a, on this kind of scale of PD site. So I won't be investing today, but thank you. It's a great site and I think you'll, you'll do well with it. Thank you. It's not that far from me either. It's outside the M25 and you just by two it's miles. Only just yeah. by and you hours. don't do anything outside the M25, Ranjan. You know right. you don't. <laughs> I do. You know you don't. And it's also, about time you did there, isn't it, Ranjan? No. And also, there's not enough commercial in it for you. Commercial to residential, commercial to residential, commercial to residential. Well, what's this office about? building? <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. I was meaning shops, really. Um, You're more of a shop man, aren't you, really? I, I, I think the idea of jettisoning the font part is a good idea. Was that my idea? Uh, simultaneously thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. <laughs> I'm just thinking that with the square footage you've got, I think you can get a little bit more out of it. Because the minimum space is, is 37. And uh, looking at the way it's configured, I think you can optimise it and get a little bit more out of it. I'm not so worried about the parking either. 
because I think um, with the proximity to the station, you should manage to do without. It'll have the right PTEL scores and all of that. It's the council's decision though, isn't it? Well, it's down so to you two to make, make, well, make some Well, you can do decisions. 106 agreements and all of that and, uh, and just say that you know, no one can have a car parking space, basically, which is not so bad if you're doing one bedroom flats. Much as I would love to take council's words on pre-app as <laughs> gospel, having just been caught out by something similar, then I have a little reticence on that. To be honest, I don't think I could offer anything better than John. And I think on this particular deal, I think he's a probably, probably a better partner than I would be. But I love what you've done. I love the numbers. I love your ambition for your first project. And yeah, I totally wish you well on this. I like it. I'm just wondering uh, what to offer you, really. It's obvious to offer better than John did. No, I, I, I think John has uh, offered at the right level. So all I'd be prepared to do is match it. Mm. But we'd be looking at jettisoning the, uh, the front part and sticking with the, with the office building and um, optimising the layout a little bit. That would obviously decrease the potential return on profit. Uh, by not adding those additional four two-bedroom apartments. There's a lot of extra building effort in, in messing around with buildings like that at the back than there is in just converting that existing office space into the flats. It's very, very simple, that. So, John, you've got two offers by the sound of things, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Both at the same level, both giving you a share of 35% of the net profit after all costs. If I can just say, I'm flexible. If, if you, we can demonstrate that it's better to do your original idea on the, um, on the shops and the, with the flats above, that's fine if, the, if it is. Yeah. But I think potentially, if there's a buy for that anyway, you might find that actually by investing less money, us investing less money, we'll make a bigger rate of return. And I think that's the balance that, that we can decide between us if we're partners. I understand. So um, it's entirely up to you. You've got about a minute in which to decide what you'd like to do. Or have you already made your mind up? My gut says I'd like to accept your offer, John. And as much as I would like to work with you, Ranjan, uh, I would like to still see the potential opportunity to maximise the project. And if John is prepared to explore that, then I would like to accept your offer, John. Uh, fantastic. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Well thank you. Well. Thank you very much. So, judging by your celebrations, you came out. It looks like you got a deal. Yep, that's right. Amazing. Yep. Congratulations. It's like an air high five. Hi. Yep, Woo! <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> who you. was it who um, took it? It was today? John who uh, I accepted an offer from. Must uh, be something in the name. Must be. <laughs> uh, there was potentially five offers on the table. Wow. Uh, Paul, Nicholas and Helen uh, politely didn't put one forward because they believed they couldn't offer more than what John could. Right. Uh, Ranjan matched what John proposed. However, John was prepared to explore the potential of the project. So he became of his choice. Amazing. Wow. So what happened kind of as you went in the room? How are you feeling before your pitch? Uh, nervous, naturally, uh, yep. but as soon as I stood in front of the five of them, um, it was tunnel vision, adrenaline in, and just prepared for everything that was going to chuck at me, and I had answers for everything that Amazing. they wanted to know. Yeah, you can never be too overprepared, eh? No, it was really good. Well, huge congratulations, and I look forward to seeing how it unfolds for you. Thank you very much. Thanks. I think that deal is better than he has demonstrated. Well, he's, he's put 800, almost 900,000 in as contingency. Correct. Contingency that's is about 200,000. And the, the reason I think that is that these types of deals, nearly always you can pay a third of the end value, somewhere just under a third of the end value. And you look at the end value, he's talking 6.1, 6.2 million, he's buying for 2.3. Okay, it's not quite there, but the condition of it, and because it's PD, means it's cheaper to do than normal normal conversions. So they are the most conservative numbers I've ever seen, which was yeah. highly I mean, reassuring. I mean, I think it, it needs tidying up. I yeah, think, yeah, doesn't it? But the, the thing deal needs tidying up. But you are. He's undersold it because on the first page of his thingy, he's you know, he's come up with a uh, profit on GDV of twenty three percent. It doesn't sound that exciting, but when you trail through the figures, you see 
Uh, I even think he's overestimated the PD conversion cost, but I was a big fan of jettisoning that front bit. But if you want to deal with that, well, mess, that's it may fine. well be that's what we end up doing, isn't it? But we may we may end up selling it. Maybe off I need to offer that you flexibility. Take, take <laughs> that twenty percent on cost contingency and do your ten percent on build costs. Yeah. There's an extra seven hundred and fifty grand in it. So yeah. big difference. Yeah. Yeah. It just needs sorting out, and it, but I like him. He's got lots of, you know, he, he, he's young, ambitious, yeah. intelligent. Yeah. Uh, came with the figures. Too, yeah. Too he's many done for his my research. too many for my liking. Not <laughs> enough for you, probably. But I just felt that it was it, it's uh, it, and it's the sort of thing we you know we buy a lot of, and that's the other thing we're comfortable with it. Yeah. We understand it um, as you do, Ranjan, and that's why we both bid probably, wasn't it? And they, the the units weren't small enough for Nicholas. No, <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> Not enough of them. It was too far away for it was too far away. Well, what can I say? I hope you've loved this series as much as we have. Our angels have flew home and are excited to be getting straight on with their deals in just a few days. We've loved having you with us here at Property Elevator, and we'll see you for the next series. Mm -hmm.